You can download the art seen in the video for free, link in the description. To make smooth and polished platformer movement, we will implement a plethora of different mechanics into the movement. These include Coyote Time, which allows the player to still jump for a certain amount of time after leaving the ground. Jump Buffer, which will tell the game to perform a jump even though the player pressed the jump button a few frames before touching the ground. Variable Jump Height, which will allow the player to perform smaller jumps by releasing the jump key early. Increased Gravity over time as the player falls. Ledge Hopping, which will give the player a small jump boost if they were just about to make it onto a platform but missed the jump by a small amount vertically. Acceleration and Friction to smoothen the horizontal movement. And finally, a head nudge that will push the player left or right if they are jumping and just barely hit a ceiling with the left or right side of their head. First, add a character body 2D, add a sprite, and a collision shape 2D as its child. Set the shape of the collision shape 2D to a rectangle. Set its size to 14 by 14. I'll then zoom in using the scroll wheel. Go to the sprite and add the art atlas to the texture, which you can download the link in the description. Enable region, hit edit region. Let's change the snap mode to grid. Zoom in and change it so that it's only selecting the character sprite. Go to the texture and change the filter to nearest. Next, we will add two timer nodes. We'll rename them to Coyote Timer and Jump Buffer Timer. For Jump Buffer Timer, set its wait time to 0.12 and change it to one shot. For the Coyote Timer, set its wait time to 0.1 and enable one shot as well. Next, we will add Raycast to check the ledge and head nudge collision. Add a Raycast 2D, rename it to Left Head Nudge. Set its target position to 0 by negative 2 and enable hit from inside. Then set the position of it to negative 7 by negative 7. Then while selecting the Raycast, hit Ctrl D or Command D to duplicate it and change this one's position instead of negative 7 on the X axis to negative 5. Then we'll duplicate it once again, but we'll rename this one to the right head nudge. Then change its position to 7 by negative 7. Duplicate it again and change its position to 5 by negative 7. We will use the outer raycast to detect the collider that we are hitting our head on, and we'll use the other raycast to check if there is empty space for us to move left or right. Add a new raycast 2D to the scene, rename it to right ledge hop. Change its target position to 2 by 0, and set hit from inside to be true. Set its position to 7 by 6. Duplicate it and change its position to 7 by 2. Duplicate it again and rename it to left ledge hop with the target position to negative 2 on the x-axis and change its position to negative 7 by 6. Duplicate it again and change its position to negative 7 by 2. Same as the head nudge with the ledge grab, we'll use the bottom raycast to detect the wall and the upper raycast to detect empty space. Finally, save the player scene, click on character body 2D and add a script. In the script, we'll use two onready variables for timers so that if we end up moving them in the scene tree, we will only need to rewrite their path once. Additionally, we'll create a variable checking if we have already run the coyote timer. We will then have a constant for jump height and max gravity, as well as a variable for gravity. We use constants as there will never be a situation where we need to change the values later in the code while the game is running. Finally, we add three constants for horizontal movement. This includes max speed, acceleration, and friction. We will then add the built-in physics process function. For the horizontal movement, we will make a variable called x input, which is equal to the strength of the right arrow key minus the left arrow key. This will return 0, negative 1, or 1 based on what key is being pressed. We will then make velocity.x equal to a lerp going from velocity.x to x input multiplied by the max speed. We will use a custom variable for the weight of the lerp. This variable will decide whether we use acceleration or friction based on if the player is trying to move. We use lerp to smoothly move from the velocity.x to our desired position of x input multiplied by max speed. Weight changes how fast we go from one value to the next. This concludes our horizontal movement. For the jump, we will first use an if-else statement to check whether the player is on the ground or not. If they are on the ground, we'll reset the coyote timer variable. We will check if the coyote timer is currently running and if we have already activated the coyote timer during this time that the player has not been on the floor. Then we will activate the coyote timer and set coyote time activated to true. We will then add the variable jump height by checking if we have released the jump key or if we have hit the ceiling. If so, then we will half the current y velocity. I add the additional check for if the player is hitting the ceiling as to avoid the player from sticking to the ceiling when jumping. Next, we will check if the jump key has been pressed. If so, then we will check if we are already running the jump buffer timer, and if not, then we will run the jump buffer timer. Finally, we'll check if the jump buffer is running, and either the coyote timer is active, or we are on the floor. Then, if true, we will set velocity.y to jump height, and disable all the timers to ensure that the player doesn't perform multiple jumps mid-air. This concludes the jumping code. As for gravity, we will first go back to the if-else statements from before, and make it so that if we are on the floor, then we will lerp gravity towards its minimum value of 12. Else, if we are not on the floor, then we will lerp gravity towards the max gravity constant. Finally, we will apply gravity to the velocity.y by making it plus equal it. And to make the player move based on the built-in velocity property, we will call the move and slide function. Now as for the head nudge, we will check if velocity.y is less than jump height divided by 2. This will ensure that we only apply horizontal nudge in scenarios where the player is trying to reach a very high place. We will then create a variable that will store the data for whether or not each raycast, that is for our head nudge, is colliding or not. 
We'll then check only one true value, meaning that there is only one raycast that is hitting the ceiling. If so, we will then check if that is the leftmost head nudge or the rightmost head nudge. And depending on it, we will then add or subtract 1.75 from the player's global position.x. We only allow one raycast to be colliding with the ceiling as to ensure that if we do nudge the player horizontally, that it's for the purpose of reaching a higher location. As for ledge hopping, we'll check if velocity.y is more than negative 30, but less than 5, and if the absolute value of velocity.x is more than 3. The y velocity check is to ensure that the player is towards the apex of their jump, and the absolute value will change x velocity to a positive no matter what, and we can then use that to check if it is more than 3 meaning that the player has been moving for a little bit of time. Finally, we check if the left ledge hop, which is the lowest one, is colliding, and the left ledge hop 2, which is above it, is not, and that the player is moving towards the left. Then apply some additional jump height to velocity.y. We do less jump height than a regular jump, as to ensure that the player doesn't go up too high. Finally, we use the exact same logic to do the right ledge hop, checking if the bottommost right ledge hop is colliding, and the topmost right ledge hop is not, and that the player is moving towards the right. Then we add jump height to the velocity.y.